not thinking about anything is zen once you know this walking sitting or lying down everything you do is zen Today in the segment Behind the Name you will get to know about a monk who is rather unknown to the masses. He was the first patriarch of Zen philosophy and also the 28th in the lineage of Buddha. How a wealthy prince sacrificed the life of the palace and became a monk at an early age and that too without being a prolific writer or a philosopher he attained buddhahood at only the age of 22. This is a story about a prince born and raised in the Pallava dynasty in the late 5th century. From the very beginning, he was uninterested in the lavish palace life and would rather engage himself in Buddhism's teachings. At the age of 7, he was being taught by Prajnatara, believed to be the 27th lineage of the Buddha. After his Buddhahood, he acquired the name Bodhi Dharma and followed the text Lankavatra Sutra meaning Yogacara or Mind Only Meditation. You might think what does mind only meditation mean? Well, this is a school of Buddhism which doesn't believe in following scriptures or manuscripts for the attainment of buddhahood, but rather focuses on one's mind and body from within to do the same. Many of these facts were written in the book by a Chinese writer and philosopher, Dao Zhan from the 7th century AD. Bodhi Dharma was an avid follower of Mahayana Buddhism and always taught his disciples to ask the right questions rather than dwelling on the wrong ones and developing the wrong beliefs and ideas. While teaching in India, he was encouraged by his guru to travel around the world and spread the true teachings of Buddhism. So, it is believed that he then made his venture towards China, where he had a not so pleasant encounter with King Wu in southern China. Bodhi Dharma was not at all happy with the questions that the king wanted answers to, to which he replied, "Differentiating between what is unholy and what is holy is in self an unholy behavior on the king's part." This made King Wu infuriate with anger and banished Bodhi Dharma from his kingdom. At around 527 AD the Indian monk reached the Shaolin temple where he was not allowed entry but earlier before reaching the temple he had an encounter with a warrior named Shen Guang who was mesmerized by the only presence of Bodhi Dharma and pestered him to teach him the learnings of Buddhism Bodhi Dharma as always didn't say much to which Shen Guang followed him wherever he went on reaching the Shaolin temple which also is believed to have been founded by an another Indian monk named Buddha Bhadra Bodhi Dharma took refuge in a cave near the temple Bodhi Dharma meditated there for 9 years straight while facing the wall of the cave it is also believed that his mind and body were so concentrated that his body form was in some way sculpted in the wall of the cave There is also another belief that to prevent his body from sleeping in the state of meditation he cut off his eyelids using a very sharp knife All these facts are not easy to digest but what to say these are the beliefs of quite a few people around the world after all this Shen Guang lost his patience and asked the monk one last time when he would teach him all the knowledge that the monk had acquired seeing this eagerness of Shen Guang Bodhi Dharma replied when the red snow will fall from the sky instantly listening to this Shen Guang took his sword in his right hand and cut off his left arm Bodhi Dharma was in awe after witnessing such an act of self sacrifice and agreed to accept him as his disciple Following the next 4 years Bodhi Dharma dug up four wells for his disciple Shen Guang each representing four phases of one's life namely sweet sour bitter and spicy and to Shen Guang's astonishment the water from all four tasted very different in this way Bodhi Dharma taught his disciple the true meaning of life by a lesson in mind to mind heart to heart fashion Shen Guang after attaining buddhahood was given the name of Hui Ke by Bodhi Dharma meaning one who is capable of wisdom and was asked to live on the drum mountain in front of the Shaolin temple. Oh, did I inform you that many historians and philosophers strongly believe that all these stories about this Indian monk Bodhi Dharma are vastly exaggerated and he was not the one who developed the art of Zen meditation. 
Well, this is not the end of the story of Bodhi Dharma. There is more to it. It is also believed that after all these years of meditation and teaching by him, there were many enemies which he made. These enemies of Bodhi Dharma got jealous of the amount of popularity that he was gaining and tried to poison him twice. But fortunately, he survived both attempts. But the next time they did such a thing, Bodhi Dharma accepted the poison. This ended his life for them. But was Bodhi Dharma dead, or was he able to survive again? Finding the story interesting? Then stay tuned with the Cognizant Crow for more such videos and never let your curiosity die.